Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in digital infrastructure. My name is Emily Scherer for JSA. I am joined today by John Celentano, the business editor of Inside Towers. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you have a really unique perspective because you are reporting on a lot of the people who are here at this conference. That's correct. So I would love to just start out by hearing a little bit more about Inside Towers, the publication. Yeah, Inside Towers is a daily newsletter that appears magically in your inbox at 6 a.m. every every morning. Um, towers is in our name, but we cover all aspects of digital infrastructure from towers to fiber to data centers to small cells, edge infrastructure, in-building wireless, power. Um, and we reach uh, a pretty good size audience of people in the industry, whether they be uh, um, operators, manufacturers, uh, and suppliers and um, professionals like consultants and lawyers and, and others. So it's um, we get a lot of good feedback. Uh, people appreciate, I think, the timely nature of the publication. They get a chance to kind of catch up on what's going on in the industry first thing every morning. It's a, like I said, it's daily. And, um, and so we, we try to stay on top of what's going on, not only domestically, but internationally. And we look at topics from a business point of view a technology point of view and a regulatory point of view. So uh, I'm the business editor. We have a Washington bureau chief, and uh, uh, we cover, you know, all of that. So. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Now you said it shows up magically. I'm sure a lot of hard work goes into that. So, <laughs> well, yeah. our, our managing editor says you don't want to see how the sausage is made. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so by three o'clock every day we're we're editing and and then it's getting ready for for push out in the morning. So yeah, such important news. So yeah, thank you for doing what you do, and I'm excited to talk trends because you do have such mm -hmm. a good pulse on the industry. So AI is making waves across every single sector. What impact do you see? AI having on the wireless industry in particular um, and digital infrastructure as a whole? Yeah, that's the question of the day, right? Yeah. I mean, AI is, is the talk of all these conferences. I was at a tower conference last week. AI was being discussed. It's being discussed here uh, and it'll permeate through the whole ecosystem. So it really starts in the data center. In fact, it, some of the uh, advocates are referring to data centers these days as AI factories meaning all the learning models are in the data center with these uh, graphical processing units and, and, and the like. But realistically, what, what will happen is once we move from the learning and the training mode into the inference mode, where we're actually using data to analyze and predict outcomes from that data, um, all of that's going to get dispersed down to the edge of the network. So we're talking, you know, we need large fiber optic pipes to make that happen. We need more towers because now we're connecting to devices that are AI enabled. The iPhone, there's an iPhone out now that's AI enabled, right? So the, the impact starts at the data center, but we are seeing uh, what it's doing and the um, influence it's having at the tower side, on, on the wireless side. So, you know, wireless is a key component of making all this work, right? And um, that's the trend we see now. We're not talking overnight. We're talking probably a seven to ten year time frame. But already we're seeing planning uh, going on amongst the tower companies and the wireless carriers. For instance, the wireless carriers are <clears throat> deploying more band and more spectrum, so they'll have the bandwidth to handle these AI applications. And um, they're locating on more towers. They have spectrum that they still have to turn up and license and, and, and activate. So, um, you know, it's it's already having an effect. And um, so the tower companies, for instance, are reporting now. They're saying their revenues are up, um, you know, typically 3 4% a year, which is consistent with their lease agreements. And the tower companies are reporting that their tenants, the mobile network operators, are asking for more co-locations, meaning they're going on more towers because they're putting cell sites out, not just out from the, the major metro areas, out into second tier markets, small towns and rural areas, right. uh, getting ready, as it were. So they're, they're putting the capacity in place and um, 
they'll be able to deliver those kind of applications when they uh, when they're available. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because we hadn't approached that specific topic of AI yet at the conference from uh, the wireless perspective. So it's yeah, an ecosystem. You. Yeah, you know, we have yeah. to think of it as an ecosystem. It's not just data centers. Yes, everything is focused on the data. Yes, the big money is being spent on data centers, but ultimately it all ties together. You know, it has to. The data centers have to communicate with each other. They have to move that. Uh, AI traffic to the edge right. to users like you and I, yeah. like businesses, like yeah. governments. And um, so it has, definitely has an influence from the data centers to the edge. Yeah, great. So interesting. And another topic I want to touch on is 5G deployment. Yeah. Um, so continuing, to, it's continuing to expand. What challenges and opportunities are top of mind for um, operators and network providers? The operators still have a lot of spectrum that they've acquired in auctions in the FCC auctions that they still have to deploy. And so that's good news for the tower companies. The tower companies report that they're seeing requests for more co-locations on new towers and fewer amendments, meaning changes to existing sites. So the carriers are building out their networks and the tower companies are responding to that. So that is driving a lot of activity on, on that side of it. So, um, you know, um, like I said, the, the, they're reporting good results for last year and their their pipeline of, of uh, new leases and uh, uh, new demand is, is building. So um, I think the outlook for the next few years is pretty positive. Great, thank you for sharing that. And then an extra question, I'm gonna hit you with one just sure. on the fly. What's been your favorite part of the conference? Have you seen a panel or a discussion that, that was particularly interesting to you or a topic? You know, to be honest with you, they're all pretty good. Yeah. And uh, uh, I come to these conferences uh, and I learn something something new or different, or I get a different perspective on something I've been thinking about or learning about. Right. So no, this is good. I think it's a, this particular conference is an interesting mix of you know, operators and investors and professionals that support all of that. Right. And uh, you always learn something new. Yeah. I've been in the business a while and I always learn something new. Yeah, that's great. I thought it was just me. So it's great no, to hear no, 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 a, no. a veteran also learning new things here at Metro Connect. <laughs> Every day. So, yeah, Every great. Day it's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Hey, Emily, I enjoyed the yeah. conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, stay connected and happy networking. Thanks for tuning in.